it's going to be an absolute bloodbath. What comes next in these crypto markets is leaving the average investor begging for another opportunity to be able to buy into those small cap coins that then blew up to be 100x monsters. It's going to leave others begging for forgiveness from their husbands or their wives for buying that shit coin with their life savings that went to pretty much nothing. There's so many mistakes that are going to come out of this next phase of the market because this next phase we're entering is key. Bitcoin looking unsteady, but with that ETF news ahead of us, what could be looming that is so important? I'm going to break it down in this video and tell you exactly the steps you need to take to be able to prepare to not fail. Hit that like button. Let's get into this video. Now, guys, I start you off with a Bitcoin chart. This is currently late on Friday night in the UK and Bitcoin currently at 43 thousand eight hundred and forty two dollars running into this red band which is a significant area of previous support and resistance which we typically can bounce off at the rsi or relative strength index down below is printing a massive bearish divergence where you can see the price has been increasing as the strength of the price has been decreasing this is not a nice thing because typically it leads to guess what falls in the market price here you see previously at the top of the market the bull market blow off top we had that kind of same bearish divergence coming in you can see it happening again here that first leg of that kind of upper trend there and then again here what does this mean for us well it means that potentially bitcoin could be going down or up it doesn't really mean anything yet but it does mean at some point before that kind of blow off massive monster run we're gonna have some form of a pullback and i mean some form of a pullback like this in my personal opinion but you're like hold your horses okay you're gonna point this out to me the watcher guru over on twitter has just told us that the bitcoin etf applicants have cleared a key hurdle on the path to sec sign-off according to a bloomberg report this is obviously very exciting etf approval should be kind of coming in before the 10th of january theoretically it could get passed it could get rejected theoretically though i still think what comes after this phase is fairly standard i think if it gets approved suddenly you see a solid rally to somewhere like kind of 50 to 55k on the bitcoin chart but let's look at this this is a post from stock money lizards over on twitter again has posted here different time frames against the fibonacci sequence on time frames rather than on price it's very interesting. This is 2014 to 2018. And the Fibonacci sequence is simply the sum of a number plus the previous number in the sequence to create the next number. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, etc. Now you can see the bottom obviously comes give or take a few weeks, okay? Because you can see that the bottom of this market doesn't really quite line up. It was a little bit after this. Now we come down to this next one. We have the three, uh, and then we get across to the five. The five is what we want to pay attention to because according to this, the five is where we are right now or approaching to where we are right now. Notice in both of these markets, after the five, we see a surge towards the upside. But in both situations, we get some form of a pullback this one not particularly big and then we get this next one which is obviously the covid black swan event which is a monster now what do we do right now then well let's anticipate the etf gets approved or not theoretically we're heading to a peak somewhere around the end of 2024 into 2025 where's the peak according to this somewhere between 150k and 200k does anyone really have any idea well it's very speculative to play with but all we know is that's a lot higher than it is right now. And what that means for the old coins is also very big. But if we get a dip like this or a dip like this or any kind of dip, it's going to be brutal. OK, it's going to leave a lot of people begging for forgiveness, you know, from the people whose money they've lost. But can we sit there confidently out of the market and be like, you know what? I'm waiting for that dip because in the dip, I'm going to be able to buy. Well, maybe you can, but you run the risk, obviously, of being out the market. Now, what am I doing right now? Well, personally, I have had a look at accumulating a few altcoins here and there over the last few weeks. But I've started to ease off of my buying and I've paid a lot of attention to a lot of major wallets through various wallet tracking apps. And I realized that a lot of the kind of like the smarter money and not really doing a lot of buying right now. But crucially, they're not doing this either. They're not selling. 
And I also haven't really been selling either. So what am I doing? What am I preparing for? Well, in any phase of the crypto market, the thing that fucks most people is a lack of preparation. And what I mean by a lack of preparation is inability to see what happens next. And obviously, from one day to the next, we don't really know what happens. But when you wake up and Bitcoin's up $1,000 or down $1,000, it doesn't really bother you. But when you wake up that morning and you see your favorite altcoin or whatever it is down 30 or 40%, probably going to knock the wind out of you if you're not prepared for it. On the flip side of things, if you wake up and see your favorite altcoin up 100 or 200%, you also need to be damn well prepared for that because you need to manage your emotions. Failure to manage the emotions is what is going to get the better of you. So how do we know how to deal with those emotions before it happens? Well, we take the emotions away. It's much easier to make a decision when we're non-emotional, like in a situation like now, than it is when you're like suddenly like panicking and you think you need to sell or you think you need to buy, okay? That's when you do stupid stuff. So what we're going to do is identify. If we want to stay in the markets, anticipating that the bull market is ahead of us, that would be probably what I would be doing but I've obviously got some cash on the side ready to burn up in a few different projects. So which projects am I going to buy? Well, I'm not going to tell you every single project, but there's a few projects I've got my attention on. I covered in a video that I made yesterday about a massive deep dive from Masari. And Masari basically have identified that decentralized AI and deep in or decentralized physical infrastructure projects are going to be the absolute daddies of the next bull market in terms of gains. So bearing in mind what they said, I then kind of looked into a lot of the projects that they've been talking about. But a lot of those projects have been pumping really hard. You know, it's like this. You meet up with your friend or you see, you know, an advert for a, a particular item that you really, really want. Maybe you're a kid, you really wanted a bike and you're like, wow, that bike looks really pretty damn cool. OK, you then get home and you like get on Google or you open the magazine or whatever. And you find out that that bike is actually like a thousand pounds and you're never going to be able to get that for your birthday present or you're never going to be able to afford it with your pocket money. And suddenly you're like, ah. Oh. Do you feel like that about some of these crypto projects when you're like, wow, that crypto project's going to probably kill it. And then you see a cash has already been killing it. And you're like, fuck, missed it. But you haven't potentially missed it. Now, remember, any project that's kind of newer and massively been pumping recently has been pumping off of the back of the confidence in the market. If some like dirty, devious shady crap comes in and suddenly dumps the market, it's going to leave a lot of these coins sitting there pretty broken as well because this confidence is going to get wiped off of the smug faces of all the blokes who've been making loads of money in it okay so what we can do is identify the projects we like now i like a cash guys because decentralized physical infrastructure is going to be basically hugely important for ai and things into the future but i'm not buying it right now because look at it it's massively pumped so what we do is we need to identify the where we want to buy it at and as you know guys we love a buy zone you can see that the area here where we dip into it, we bounce out, we dip into it, and then we rally again, is a clear area of which a cash could be worth buying, okay? Now, we can see that there's another one down below that's even lower. Now, what we want to do is completely step away from this. Remember, we want to take ourselves away. When Whenever we wake up and there's like crazy shit going on in the market, we don't want to care because we've already had our trades automatically processed for us. Now, I'm not telling you to buy a cash. This is just an example of a coin that I like the look of that I was too late for. So here we can see down here, $2.1 looks like a reasonable price. Let's say, for example, that I got $100 set aside for a cash. So let's say I was really happy to get into a cash at this level because I think there might be a pullback, but nothing major. I can put in 100 bucks there or I was a little more conservative. I would put in 50 here and I'd put in 50 down here. OK. And then all I do is I take a note of the price. So we've got 2.17 here. I've got another one here at 1.5. And I'll come back to those later and show you how we can automate those trades so that we never have to be involved in any emotional turmoil points at which we make stupid decision and everything gets taken place for us because we're making this decision calmly now without having to do any panicky stuff later on. Now, what else we got? Another project well worth looking into, Auto Nolas or Olas. Small cap coin has been booming, but is notably pulling back. Look, Bitcoin starts to pull back and look at this project down 24%. I anticipate it seeing further pullbacks. Where will I see a buy on this? I hear you cry. Well, it's up to you. This chart is not the cleanest. You can look at a four hour. It might make it a bit easier for you. You can see that there was kind of a bit of sideways action here before a push. This could be a potential buy zone. Then we've got another one down at the bottom here. So what do I do? I take my 50 bucks here. I put 50 bucks in there, 50 bucks at the bottom. I write down those two prices. 
very, very straightforward. Another project that's definitely worth paying attention to is AIOZ. And I will actually be doing a deeper dive on this project next week. So make sure you subscribe if you want to find out exactly what is going on with this project, because it is absolutely booming right now. But it's absolutely booming, okay? We could potentially wait for a decent pullback, although we've been having a nice pullback here. So again, identify where you see the buy zones. Buy zones, guys, are simply where we're seeing previous bounces take place. This shows us that from these areas, you get a good chance to see a buy. You have one here, and then if things go really wrong, you've got another one down here. How does this help our mentality? Well, if we're already into a project and it starts to slide towards the downside, it might hurt us a bit. But if we know that longer term we're going to be higher, well, really, we want to be accumulating as much as possible at lower prices. Now, we don't want to lose sleep and stress out about whether or not we will be able to buy it because maybe we're busy at the time that the price suddenly zips down. Because when it dips, guys, sometimes it can just dip very quickly and then whip out of there and we miss it. Okay, so what we're doing is automating it by having our plan. We can go with like three or five coins. I'm not saying you have to choose these coins. I'm sure you've got your own coins lined up. They could be ones you already hold that you're just looking to top up on. Now here's another one, Cedify. Again, seeing this like complete rip towards the upside. And I know loads of people are like, oh, well, you're just showing me coins that are pumped. That is literally the point of this video. Although, in fact, I did show you Cedify in like November before it did this. Okay, so I did actually show you. But what we're learning about, because most people have missed the pumps right now, is how to get in if we did miss the pumps. Because the answer is not right now, but we will get in slightly later on. Cedify, where's the buy zone on Cedify? You can see somewhere around here. There's a good one. $3.20. If we get a really sick, healthy pullback to like $2.50, which would be a massive, dirty pullback of like 28%, then we've got a good chance to get into this project. I recommend reading and learning about all of the different projects I've talked about today, guys, because they're all killers, okay? And these are all genuinely projects, some of which I'm already holding, Cedify, and others I am not yet holding, which I wish I was holding, a cash, that I am actually setting these orders at. What I'm actually showing you right now is what I'm actually doing myself. Okay, so now we need to automate it. Why do we need to automate it? Well, because of this. Suddenly, one day, when you wake up and your charts are like dipping down 30, 40%, you're going to be in your heart of hearts being like, oh my God, should I be in this? Should I sell? Should I panic sell? But you need to walk away from that and not be involved, okay? The, easy, the less attention you can give that, especially before the top of the bull market, is to be like, yeah, I don't pay attention to that because I'm automatically getting nailed into trades without even knowing it and my average is are coming down, which is great. And this is how we do it. You need to sign up for a Mexi account, link down below in the description. And this is why I use Mexi, guys. Pretty much the lowest fees in the market, with over 4,000 different crypto coins. And pretty much all the coins I talked about today and others are available on Mexi. Also, the other day when Bitcoin had that meltdown, a load of exchanges like Bybit, Binance and others really struggled to cope with the volume, transactions, etc. and had some outages. Mexi was one of the only exchanges that didn't have those outages. If you're trading futures and that sort of stuff happens, it will absolutely destroy you. Mexi, guys, absolute killer exchange. Now, what we're going to do is click on spot once we create an account and we come over to this page, which looks very confusing, but relax. I'll teach you something. So let's go with S fund for now or C defy. Yep. And then we can see that we have got Cedify available here. Now, remember, what I need to do is jump back to the chart. And we see that I had the sort of prices here. We had one at 3.2 and we had the other one at 2.5. So 3.2 and 2.5. And we said 50 bucks each. So I can click on limit and I can say at 3.2, I buy $50 worth of Cedify. I hit buy Cedify. When Cedify hits that price, I'm in the trade. What was the other one? The other one was like 2.5, $50 will buy me 20 Cedify at that point. I hit buy and you'll notice I have two orders created down below. Now these trades may never hit buys, but that's fine because I'm obviously holding my other crypto at that point. And this money is on the side, but I've kind of put it into a position to actually play on my behalf. This means I can walk away from this train set and have a nice calm time without having to stress about doing things like this. Now, I know a load of people will be like, oh, I can't use Mexi because I'm in the US or whatever. Guys, just get a NordVPN link down below in the description. Still got Father Christmas for the next few days and you get four months extra for free by clicking my link down below. 
After that, it's just £2.30 or like $2.50 per month. Absolutely no brainer. And it's going to help you to use different exchanges around the world, no matter where you're from. And you don't need to use KYC on Mexi. You can transfer cash in from another exchange. You don't need to use KYC. And if you're using a VPN, that's a really useful and powerful thing. Also, it's going to help to protect you while you are trading online and stop other people using spyware to check out what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, guys, I hope that all made very clear sense. Basically, what we're doing is taking ourselves away from the stresses of stupid decisions because stupid decisions are always made in our lives when we're stressed. Don't get stressed. Enjoy this crypto bull market. It's going to be fun. If you do things right and prepare properly, you're never going to have to panic about it. Hope you enjoyed that, guys. Hit the like button, subscribe. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.